Good evening, we're back again. As always, I always say that. I always say good evening, I always say we're uh, back again. So anyway, we got a needed project to do. We have that uninsulated now. There's obviously some spray foaming left to do, things like that, but it is a usable space that we can heat. Now, I wasn't going to worry about getting this all heatable this year, but uh, you know what? I've got that undone. We've come this far. Let's just get it done, at least what I can do financially and whatnot. And I should be able to hopefully get at least this roof insulated. The walls we could deal with at another time. That can wait until next fall, whatever it takes. But, so I've had, this video is going to answer probably uh, hundreds of questions on this channel the last few months. And that is, how are you going to heat the second floor? Um, or what are you doing? What are your plans to heat? So, the plan has always been to have the second floor as a finished off space for a wood shop, but also have it nicely finished off so that, you know, so it's enjoyable to be in. But part of that's going to be heating it. Obviously, you're freezing your ass off. It's not going to be that enjoyable. And I can tell you this winter, it has not been that enjoyable to be up here. So we're going to add some heat in here. We took that low pie wood stove out of our house last winter when we put in the coal stove that's been out here in the barn. We're going to get it up here, clean it up, and we're going to use it. So the plan is, I'm going to use chain falls to get it up the stairs. We're going to do some creative rigging. We've done a lot of creative rigging. That stove's just over 400 pounds. And when you take the bricks out, to be honest with you, it doesn't make that much of a difference because fire brick is fairly light. It probably adds, I'm going to say, maybe 25 pounds to the stove. I know that's a lot, but the chain fall is doing all the work. So we're going to use the chain hoist, get it up the stairs. We're going to get it up here. Um, obviously, I don't trust these one-inch boards to hold a 400-pound plus wood stove on it all the time. So we're going to build a pedestal for it. We have our chimney material, and I'll be showing that because I want to discuss some differences in wood stove chimneys and a little bit of the install. This is the kind of stuff that I do enough of to where I can really kind of give you some good advice on it, and hopefully it'll help some of you do the same thing. So anyway... I've got the wood stove at the bottom of the stairs. I've got to get some planks laid out on the stairs. We've got to get it rigged up so we can hoist. The lighting's going to be a little crappy down there. You guys know how that goes, but once we get up here, we should be okay. But I'm going to kind of take you step by step what I'm doing in this video. We're probably just going to be getting the wood stove up here, and we're going to discuss the venting of this stove. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll catch you on the other side. All right, we've got our chain fall set up. I think I'm going to have to get a couple more wraps on this to shorten this up a little bit, just so when we get the, the stove up here, it lands on this landing all right. Um, so, I've got a bunch of 2 by up above here stacked, screwed in. I've got a 4 by 6 on top of that, timber locked down into the timbers. And then I've got a cleat up there to keep the strap from sliding forward as we pull this thing up the stairs. Uh, I like using one of these because I can kind of, what I'm going to have to do though, because I don't like being under something like this when I'm trying to slide something heavy up. So we're going to try to stay off to one side of it as much as possible. And we're really going to have to pay attention to this because if it looks like it's going to go, we got to take care of it. we got to do what we got to do. And the other thing I'm going to be doing is watching this landing well. It's built well, but this thing's good and heavy. I'm not worried about the main stairs. I mean... We got four inches of two by ten on each side, so pretty much four by tens, and then two inch treads all the way up. So that I'm not too worried about. But I've got to go down, tip the stove up onto the uh, boards we have here. The other thing we're going to have to really watch for is make sure that stove doesn't want to slide off to the side. There is going to be quite a bit of drag on this because we're sliding it up on the bottom of the stove. Um, it's going to be tipped on its side, but you got a couple of ledges there. It's, it's going to be a little sketchy getting them up the stairs. And then we have to figure out our pick points up above because I don't want to use this frame. I don't think it's strong enough to hoist the stove up the stairs. I think it'd be really dangerous to use it. So let's see what we can do here.
I know this is slow guys and I know we're doing it by hand but I tell you when you're using power winches and stuff like that I think they're wonderful I I have access to them I mean they're really nice but sometimes I really like the feel of doing it by hand because I can kind of I can kind of get a feeling for what's going on with the load how bad things are shifting is something catching something hanging up it gives me a little more control and a little time to adjust where I need to adjust like we just did adding another board to make it more of a ramp down here so it doesn't tip off to the side now we're a couple feet now from the landing I know you guys can't see the stove yet but we're almost there so I said sometimes doing it by hand is kind of nice um, I almost wish I'd made that trap door over there a lot bigger meaning wider I, I built that in mind of timbers coming up to the second floor for timber framing but uh, right now would have been a little handier having that and maybe that's something we'll do in the future almost there not have much pain left Now we're on one of the steps. Holy cow, guys, we did it. Ooh. Don't care for that. But we got the weight resting on and we're not dead. So that's always a good day, right? And I'm not in the hospital again, so <laughs> let's see what happens here. First, I put my fat ass on here. That makes us over 600 pounds. Make sure all our legs are on. All right, we are completely on the landing.
All right, guys, there you have it. This wood stove right here is a neat story behind the stove. Now, I was raised by my uncle. I mentioned that before on the channel. Um, we put the stove in the house that I grew up in in 1990. I've been feeding this stove since 1990. Now, she's a little rusty right now because it's been out here down in the cold and whatnot. So, you know, condensation, things like that. But it'll clean up just fine. The other thing, this stove has the original bricks. These bricks are 29 years old in this thing. They're still in here. They're still usable. There's a couple I need to replace, but they're not missing anywhere. Um, this stove has a bypass damper on the back of it, so it redirects the flue, the flue gas to the front of the stove and back up and out over a set of bricks in the top of it. It's kind of like it's an early version of a reburn a little bit, so it's trying to slow it down, keep the heat in the stove a little longer. This stove right here is kind of like the precursor to some of your newer EPA stoves. Now, Vermont Castings was ahead of it, you know, ahead of the low pies as far as the catalytic converters and whatnot, but these stoves here never had the issues that you had with catalytic converters. And mm -hmm. when something goes bad in the top of this, all you have to do is replace the bricks. Now, I have seen people, and it looks like a pretty interesting thing, I have seen people put the reburns in the tops of stoves like this, I'm not going to touch this. We're not going to modify this stove. This thing has been a great stove for almost 30 years. I've been feeding this thing for almost 30 years, and uh, I'm very familiar with the way this thing runs. Now, if I fill this up nice with good hardwood, hickory or oak or something like that, you can get a good six-hour burn out of it. The big thing I don't like about wood stoves is they're so inefficient. Even the uh, even the newer ones, I'll probably get some hate mail over this. I love burning wood. Let's Don't get me wrong. I've always loved burning wood. But when you damper a stove down like these, these steel stoves, you damper them down so far you're taking all efficiency out of the burn. You're sending most of the volatiles and combustibles right up out of the chimney. And that's no good. That's why, you know, I was, I was pretty happy to switch to coal inside the house. But for out here, this is a wood shop. We're going to have plenty of scraps and things like that to burn. So this will be used out here quite well. The big sawdust burner we're going to put downstairs because uh, that I have a feeling is so big that it's going to kind of overpower this space a little bit. <coughs> and I would much rather have that on a concrete floor. You know, something a little more protection when something goes wrong. Up here in a wood shop, you know, something goes wrong up here and you have a lot of sawdust, a lot of dry lumber, stuff like that. You have your polyurethanes, whatever it is you have up here you're using. You know, you, you've got a, <laughs> you could have a bad situation pretty quickly if you don't have a good airtight stove and you got sparks escaping, things like that. And as it stands, we're going to build a little platform on this. It won't be real tall, but we'll make a nice wide platform for it that'll extend out and we'll cover it with sheet metal. And that way, if we get coals and things like that that pop out, and they invariably always do, It'll land on that instead of instead of out on the wooden floor in the sawdust. The other thing that I'm going to have to be really diligent about is keeping it clean around the stove. You guys know how I work. You know how often I grab a broom. So that's something we're really going to have to watch. Now, <coughs> venting options on this. I'm not going to go through the roof of this. I'm actually going to be going up and out the wall. I have a... Uh, over here to my right, I have a kit for that. It has a clean-out tee. Now, this thing's not going to be very fun to brush out because in order for me to do it, I'm going to have to get on a ladder every year to brush it out. So, inside it won't be a big deal. Just pop the pipe off, take the pipe outside, clean it out, throw it back on. That's not a big deal at all. But, as I said, it's something uh, that I know is going to be a pain in the ass. But... It's something that's really going to have to be done because all this work, I'd really hate to send this place up in smoke, you know. And uh, the other thing is we have to get this up above the chimney, or up above the chimney, up above the peak of the roof at least two feet. That is the standard rule when you're venting your fireplaces or your wood stoves or anything like that. The chimney has to be two feet above any of the surrounding uh, buildings, things like that, that are nearby. Otherwise, the wind swirl is not going to draft right. When a stove doesn't draft right, it doesn't burn right, you sit up terribly, or you get smoke blowing back in your building. So that's something you really have to watch for. Now you have two types of, two standard types of flue pipe 
uh, insulated flue plate pipe for venting your stove. I'm going with a triple wall Duravent. It's six inch. If you look down there, it's it's three pipes in there. There's a uh, layer of rock wall inside. You know the pipe over that, and then you have your outside stainless steel jacket on top of that. This the other type you can get is the metal bestus, and to be honest with you, metal bestus pipe is twice as expensive as triple wall pipe. There's a good reason for that. Metal bestus is a very good product, but it has like a type of insulation inside of it. It's a little bit smaller than this, meaning the diameter is not as big, but it is literally twice as much. I priced out a metal bestus system for piping um, to go through the wallet, and believe it or not, it was going to run me $700. What you see here, this kit here, this guy, and the three sections of black stove pipe behind me was $300. So venting is expensive, but you got to spend the money, do it right. Um, the triple wall pipe here has the same clearance to combustibles that the metal bestus does. It's two inches all the way around the pipe. I like to go at least three because I like a little bit of a safety factor there. This is going to be on the outside of the building. We're going to have black stove pipe on the inside of the building, which you also have to be careful with when you're venting, when you just have black stove pipe because there is going to be some clearances to combustibles that you need to be aware of. Now, if you have a more modern wood stove like this, there's going to be a plate on the back of it by law. Now, this stove was manufactured uh, 1990, and there's a plate on the back of the wall. It gives you pretty strict guidelines on clearances to combustibles, where you can put it in relation to, in corners, things like that. We kind of have a blank slate in here. We can get this thing out from the wall just fine. It tells me 15 inches to combustibles off the back of the stove. We're going to bring it out just a little bit more. And uh, that way I know my stove pipes out away from the wall enough. So anyway, that's what we're up to tonight. Just decided to get this thing up here. Uh, it's time to do it, you know. Um, I know putting this wood stove in and firing it up in this building right now would kind of be like a rabbit trying to satisfy an elephant. It's just not going to heat it. It's not going to do it. But uh, we'll at least be able to start burning the scraps off, things like that. And then as we insulate out here, it'll start working better and better. Obviously, we'll have to build our door on this and finish closing this, uh, oh, this wall and stuff over the stairwell and get a door on that, which I need to do that anyway. In case my little one comes up here, I don't need her tumbling down the stairs. Obviously, we have to finish closing off that eave. And we're really going to have to get this roof up here insulated so it doesn't condensate and It'll make rain in here if I run this too much and it gets too warm. But for now, we'll be able to at least run it, start getting some of these scraps cleaned up, and uh, see what happens. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one. Next time out, we're going to be uh, hopefully starting to put the chimney in. So I'm going to have to con somebody into doing the ladder work because uh, <laughs> I'm still not comfortable with that. But anyway, have a good night, guys. I'll see you the next time.